Welcome to Hope It's Here. My name is Greg Horn and want to talk to you this week about you are called to be a blessing. You are called to be a blessing. Uh, a lot of times uh, in the South here, especially uh, if we say uh, some, somebody that's just making a mistake or doing something unwise and we'll say, you know what, bless their heart. Uh, I've been guilty of saying that myself. So, uh, but you know, the fact of the matter is, is, uh, you know, we've been talking about what on earth am I here for? It's a wonderful 40 day devotional book, actually 42 days. The original version had just 40, but, uh, it's been revised, uh, recently and, uh, has 42 days in it now, but it's called what on earth am I here for? Uh, the purpose driven life by Rick Warren. And we've been checking out some different parts of that each week over the past, uh, six weeks, uh, because there's so many good nuggets in that. And, uh, the best part is there's over a thousand Bible verses in these devotionals and, uh, the devotionals take three or four minutes. Uh, you know, I mean, they, they take longer if you really want to study them, but you can read them in three or four minutes. Minutes. Um, I really encourage if you've never done it, if you're looking for something to kind of, you know, just kind of renew your faith a little bit, to grow a little bit. Uh, it's just kind of the basics of being a follower of Jesus. But I tell you, 20 years since I did it the first time with this revised version, I'm learning new things again this time because, as I say often here on Hope is Here, that you know what? When we're in different seasons of life, God speaks to us in different ways about different things. So I hope that uh, I know several people have actually contacted me and said, since we've done programs on this devotional book, what on earth am I here for, that they have bought copies and are really enjoying it. But just, you know, to recap, uh, you know, God's got a calling for all of our lives. Um, over 100 times in the Bible, it talks about being called to do things. Uh, God has a calling on all of our lives. Uh, God's called us to be loved. Uh, he loves us. And I know for some people, when we did that program a few weeks ago, people were just like, you know, man, uh, when you had to say, God loves me out loud, and you had to repeat that. Uh, tell you, it was very humbling, even emotional for me because so many of us feel like God can't love us because of challenges that we have in our life. And yet, friends, I want to remind you, God loves you. If you've accepted him, uh, his son, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior, he loves you exactly where you are, not where you could be, not where you should be, or even where you thought you would be in this season of life. But he loves you right where you are. And his grace is sufficient. And last uh, week I talked about, God, please give me some grace today. And if you miss those programs, really want to encourage you to go to our website, hopeisheretoday.org. That's hopeisheretoday.org. And you can catch those two 14-minute programs that I did on Monday and Tuesday. And I also want to remind you we have podcasts of all our programs. We're on all the major platforms. And great uh, way just to subscribe to those. And they'll automatically be sent to you. Or check out our YouTube channel. Uh, most of our programs are on there. And these two definitely were about, uh, God, please give me some grace today. Our YouTube channel is simply Hope is Here. And then my name, Greg Horn, which is spelled H-O-R-N. But we talked about your call to be a blessing. And I know you're like, well, you know, how do I be a blessing, Greg? Well, uh, you know, you bless others when you serve them. Uh, it might be physical assistance. You help somebody uh, get out of a car or you help somebody that can't lift something or somebody in the grocery store can't reach something on the top shelf. Uh, I'm vertically challenged. So I don't get asked to be to do that very often, but occasionally when I do, it makes me feel tall for once in my life. <laughs> uh, people kind of kid me because my youngest brother is uh, six foot four, and my middle brother six foot, and I'm five foot nine, and so they go, "Hey, what happened to you?" But I just say, "Hey, dynamite comes in small packages, right?" But, you know, the thing is, God loves to uh, give us opportunities to be blessings. Sometimes it's financial assistance. I'm so thankful for all the generous people that help make Hope is Here Ministries possible. And I, I love just uh, also myself being able to be a financial blessing to people when the Holy Spirit shows me to do that and helping people that are single parents and help people that are just less fortunate. Uh, God loves uh, when we bless others through financial assistance. And then one of the ways we don't think about being a blessing to others, but I really know that I know this is so important. It's so needed right now during this season of life in our, in our world is uh, when you're an emotional or relational support to somebody. 
And you know, a lot of times you can be a blessing just by being a listening ear. I tell you, I can count the number of people on one hand that I, I, I can count on to really listen to me. And uh, man, I'm so thankful when somebody really listens to me uh, when I'm trying to share something and not like distracted or get ready to think about what their response is going to be. Uh, but they're really engaged in listening. They even repeat uh, saying, you know, well, man, I'm sorry to hear that. Or is this what I hear you saying? And uh, we, we, we're all such a blessing uh, to people. when We just listen. And I want to remind you that God gave us two ears and one mouth. So maybe proportionally he wants us to listen twice as much as we speak. <laughs> uh, but, Somebody listening today thinking, yeah, you know, that's true, Greg, that's true. But, you know, another time is just, there's just practical support, just being a blessing, whatever it is, saying, hey, you know what? Hey, I got to go to the grocery store. Can I pick something up for you? Um, you know, uh, hey, do you need a ride somewhere? Or, yeah, I mean, there, there's just things that we can do, uh, just practical things, simple things to support people to be a blessing uh, to others. I was fortunate to go on a mission trip many years ago with the Herco family mission. They were based out of Jamaica, and they, uh, even though they were here out of central Kentucky for their headquarters, but they helped plant churches, and they did vacation Bible schools, and just were the hands and feet of Jesus in this country. And I went after I coached uh, college basketball at Western for two years back in the 90s there to do a mission trip, uh, 1992 to be exact. And they had us have a quiet time each morning. Uh, the team that led us there, Monty Wilkinson and Brewster McLeod, were the leaders on that trip. Uh, Cindy Willison also helped a lot with it. And, you know, I, I'd had quiet time off and on. But, no, honestly, I wasn't really consistent. I was uh, 26 at the time. And yet they had each morning said, you know, hey, we want you to take – uh, you know, about 30 minutes just to spend some time with God, read his word, to pray and to journal some about what God's doing in your heart during this trip. And I tell you, it was a game changer for me. And there was a verse that I read for the first time that really just spoke to me. And here, fast forward, unbelievable that that's now been 30 years. Actually incredible to think of that. But Proverbs 11.25 says, those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. And I just want to remind you that, you know, when we bless others, God, he, he blesses us. And, you know, we shouldn't do it for that, and we don't. But as followers of Jesus, this is the way God does things. He's like, hey, when you refresh others, you'll be refreshed. It could be even though you're tired, it gives you supernatural energy. I found that to be true sometimes when i uh, just really, really tired mentally, physically, and emotionally, but God uh, asked me to do something to bless somebody else, and after I do it, it's kind of uh, interesting. Sometimes I have like a little more energy, and uh, it's just amazing. I've seen God do that often throughout my life, but uh, the bottom line is that God, God shaped us to serve him. He truly did, and Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 is one of the main verses I learned when I did this, What on Earth Am I Here For? study 20 years ago. And uh, Ephesians 2.10 says, We are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That's so good. I want to say it one more time. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Friends, God has got a plan for your one only life. He wants you to be his hands and feet, to be, uh, he's got some good works that he wants you to do. And, you know, this Bible verse, God works is, is, it's your service, it's your ministry or blessing. It's a way that you help other people. I mean, Got to be honest with you here today. You and I weren't able, uh, we weren't made here just to take up space, breathe, and to live a self-centered life, and then you die. God put you and I here on this earth to make a contribution with your one and only life. And I think sometimes we get guilty, we get busy focusing on comparing our lives to other people's lives. And I want to remind you, you just have one life, and you need to live your one and only life to please an audience of one, which of course is God, and asking him, how can I be the hands and feet of Jesus today? And when you do that, that, that that's called your ministry. When you're doing good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. 
And sometimes, you know, the word blessing, uh, you need to know that another word for blessing is ministry. The word servant and the word minister are actually the same word in the Bible. The word service and ministry are also the same words. So the fact is, we're all ministers. We're not all pastors. I mean, you know, I'm a pastor. Yes, I'm a pastor of a church. Okay. But my job is to administer to the ministers. So if somebody asks you, you know, uh, at a church, how many ministers does your church have? Well, whatever that attendance is, let's just say it's, you know, 100 and average 150. Uh, we've got 150 ministers because you know what? Everybody is a minister. And you need to know that and remember that. that and our life calling is to be a, a bivocational minister of Jesus. I know some of you are like, well, you know, how can I be bivocational, Greg? I mean, I barely have enough time after doing my own job just to, to, to take care of life and family and children and pay bills and go to the grocery store and all those things. But bivocational means kind of like the word bifocal. Uh, you know, people have glasses that are bifocal. They see two things at the same time. We can see far away, and yet we can also see up close. So we can see both, though, with clarity, right? So when you are a bivocational minister of Jesus, no matter what you do in your life, you do it for two reasons and not one. So that means whether you're a bus driver, attorney, a homemaker, a doctor, a teacher, uh, a sales representative, or a farmer, doesn't matter what you are. If you're a follower of Jesus, you do it for two reasons, to help others and to honor God. I'll say that one more time. If you're a follower of Jesus, you do everything in your life for two reasons. You do it to either help others or to honor God. And maybe that just needs to be all of our prayers today. It's just, God, help me to help others and to honor you with whatever I do. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17 says, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I mean, sometimes I think we make it too complicated, friends. Uh, when we take out the garbage, you know what? That's ministry. Uh, if you change a dirty diaper, if you're working in the nursery at uh, church, you know what? That's a ministry. Um, in fact, I think people that work in children's ministry, especially the nursery, they get extra blessings in heaven. I mean, when you clean the living room or you make a sales deal or you help somebody cross the street, you're doing ministry. But here's what I know, friends. Menial tasks become meaningful tasks if I do them out of my love for Jesus and for God. I'll say that one more time. Menial tasks become meaningful tasks if I do them out of my love for Jesus and God. I mean, we've all been somewhere, uh, maybe it's at your workplace, or, and uh, you have a meeting, and if you get done, you get ready to leave, and you see some coffee cups still on the table, and, you know, some empty plates, napkins, uh, you know, coffee stirred, and the Holy Spirit prompts you to say, you know what, you ought to throw those away. And you're like, yeah, they've got somebody they pay to do that. I'm not going to do that. But as you get to the in, the doorway, the Holy Spirit says, no, I want you to help lighten that person's load. I want you to throw those uh disposable cups away and the napkins and the plates left over from the food and the trash to lighten that person's load. And so, friends, that's one of the ways that we can be a blessing, do ministry to others, just doing something like that when we're obedient to the Holy Spirit. And God presents us opportunities to do things like that every day. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but I hope that you will join us again tomorrow as we'll continue looking at You Are Called to Be a Blessing on Hope Is Here.